new courses. So take us home. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, before we start the, this last hour of the last mini course, maybe it's a good opportunity to thank the organizer for organizing this wonderful workshop this week. So thank you. <laughs> and I'll try to take you home. So. <laughs> What we, so the ultimate goal now is to prove the, the two main theorems I uh, stated in the, the first, in the first uh, hour. So let me recall you, so we have, we have two versions of the theorem, well, no, really two different theorems, but the proof will be quite similar. Um, so the first one is for hyperbolic uh, isometries in hyperbolic n space, so you have uh, m uh, uh, hyperbolic manifold, where well, I mean complete finite volume, um, and we set gamma the fundamental group, and this comes, no, I don't know what, uh, and now for any representation from gamma into the isometries of hyperbolic n space, we have this notion of volume of a representation. It's smaller equal than the volume of the manifold with equality if and only if rho is conjugated to the lattice embedding. And the second theorem, which Similar is now you want a hyperbolic three manifold. Again, you want to keep track of its lattice embedding into into uh, PSL two C. Um, then, for any representation uh, into into SLMC. Uh, the, this characteristic number is smaller or equal to 1 over 6 m times m square minus 1 times the volume of m with equality if and only if rho is conjugated to uh, the composition of i with the irreducible representation. And so the, the idea of the proof, well, first, let us start by recalling how this, uh, these characteristic numbers were defined. You start, maybe I illustrate the, the proof on, in the theorem two case. Uh, so you start with a representative of your cohomology class. At your this, this class B, which was, uh, I mean, or maybe, it was represented by the, the co-cycle B, and this is the class big B, which is bounded, so it comes from a class in here. Um, now, the, your representation induces a map in bounded cohomology, also in usual <coughs> cohomology, but this we are less interested in, because in the non-compact case, the cohomology of uh, gamma will vanish in, in, uh, in the degree, the dimension. Um, so we land in here, and this is the bounded cohomology of the, of the manifold, and also the bounded cohomology of a compact uh, core relative to its boundary. Now, you can forget that this class is bounded, and this is one dimensional given by evaluation on the fundamental class. Um, now, uh, in order to make more sense, so, so the B of, B of rho, 
is by definition the image of uh, the, the evaluation on the fundamental class of the image of this class here. Now I would like to make it correspond to the following. So maybe I, I have, I can consider also the, the continuous bounded cohomology of the isometries of H3 and also the usual continuous cohomology of the isometries of H3. And here you really have a natural map by restriction from the group to its lattice, but you can also go back by transfer. Right? So this, this uh, restriction has a, wait, has a left, left inverse given by the, by the transfer. And what is the transfer? If you think about this cohomology as the, uh, represented by gamma invariant co-cycles on the symmetric space, or on the boundary if you want, um, these are only gamma invariant. Now you want to make them invariant in the full isometric groups, you just need to integrate over a fundamental do uh, domain for G mod gamma. And this you can always do in the compact case, uh, and in a non-compact case, you can only do it for bounded cohomology, because otherwise if you integrate a non-bounded function on a uh, non-compact domain, you might not, uh, your integral might not convert. So you have this, this transfer map, and we can describe it uh, explicitly. If we take here the class such that the evaluation on the fundamental class is one, then alpha is mapped to a multiple of the volume class here, and this multiple is exactly one over the volume of m. Okay, if you think about it for manifolds without a boundary, well, of course, the volume form, when you restrict it to the compact manifold, it gives you exactly the volume of the hyperbolic volume of the manifold. So this is where this, uh, this uh, scaling factor is coming from. And now if we look back at, uh, at uh, the definition. So this means that, um, maybe I take another board, or maybe, yeah. Okay, no, I stay here. So I look at, um, which order I wanted to do this. Um, so we want to look at uh, the pullback, uh, the pullback of this guy. Yeah. I'll put it here. Sorry. So this is exactly, by, def by definition, it's a, it will be a multiple of alpha. Uh, this class here, and the multiple is exactly given by the evaluation on the fundamental class. So this is just B of O of alpha, okay? And now, what if I apply the transfer to this? A transfer to, uh, uh, sorry, Oops. confused, uh, the, yeah, the transfer to this, I apply the transfer to this class here, which is so the transfer applied to this multiple of alpha. Now this is just B of rho times the transfer of alpha, and the transfer of alpha, as I said, 
is 1 over the volume of m times the volume class in here. And now from this, we immediately get inequality. In the theorem. Why? Because we can consider the norm of these classes. So consider, consider the norm, the, the norm in uh, bounded cohomology, which was defined on the, the co-cycle is just a subnorm, and as a cohomology class, it's just the infimum over the subnorm of every representative. Um, and so we have on the left-hand side here, we have the, the, the subnorm of this class. And what I claim is that this is smaller equal than no, the norm of, of the co-cycle here. Why? Because when you take the pullback of something, the evaluation is the same. So, so the norm can only get smaller. And when you do transfer, you average. So again, the, the norm can only get smaller. And this, we saw that you have a representative with, this, uh, with, uh, with the, the norm bounded by 1 over 6. Right? So this tells you that you have this inequality here times V3, which actually is an equality. And then on the other side, what do you have? You have your number divided by volume of M times the norm of the volume class which is equal. Here, you, you don't, an inequality is not enough. At this, at this point, you really need to know that not only does this co-cycle realize uh, has this norm, but there are no, no other co-cycle with smaller norm. So this gives you immedi immediately the inequality uh, in the second theorem. And similarly, you get exactly the, 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 the same uh, for, for the, the first theorem. Now. OK. What to say about the, the equality, equality case? We need some space. So in the equality case, I will write, want to write the composition here I want to write this composition. At the Cochin level, right? Because so this thing, this related to theorem one, or just we're still just talking about theorem two. We are uh, speaking about theorem two, just in that here you have degree three and the group is SLMC. But if you replace all three by n and all SLMC by n, it's exactly the same. Uh, it's exactly the same proof. You replace this norm here by the maximal, the volume of the maximal <coughs> regular. And simplex in here also. So it's uh, so now. Oh, because taking pullback. What is it? the pullback at the Cochin level is really evaluation on the on the image points. So the evaluation, the, the set you evaluate on is smaller. So the subnorm gets smaller. Uh, transfer is integrating over some some fundamental domain. I mean normalized. So also you integrate the the norm can only get smaller. Um, so now let us write what is here. The composition. Uh, look at the composition in this diagram here at the coaching level. Um, and so we suppose also, well, if we don't have to, well, we can suppose it later. So this, this cohomology group, I can represent it by, um, by uh, measurable functions 
on the boundary. So I look at SLMC on the flag space. Okay, that's for the, the first one. The second one is a function on the boundary of, yeah, of hyperbolic space, which I get my invariant. And then the last one are functions on OK, and I, if I um, assume, assume maximality, so this means that the class, the representative I have here, will be sent here to the maximal possible multiple of the volume class. So that's um, 1 over 6 m, m squared minus 1 times the volume of H3, right? So what does it give at, at, um, at the coaching level? Uh, well, there's a little problem that here we have a map induced by representation, and now we would like the, uh, to have a, the corresponding induced map on the boundaries. So we invoke Fürstenberg that ensures us the existence of a measurable map from the boundary of H3 to, not to the flag space, but to probability measures on the flag space, which is O equivalent. And then you would like to pull back by this map. Uh, at this point, I should say two things. One is if you are interested only in the theorem one, where you moreover assume that the representation, representation rule is another lattice embedding. So that means that you are really interested in most or rigidity. Uh, in the compact case, then this representation uh, you can construct or you can choose a row equivalent map between the, the, uh, the hyperbolic uh, space to itself, which is a, a quasi isometry and hence extends to a continuous map on the boundary. So you get this on the nose. Right? If you're just interested in most row for co compact lattices. Um, but in general, you have to, to pass through probability measures. And then once you, you have this map, then how, how is the, the induced map? Well, given beta, what is the pullback, uh, the pullback of B, you want to e evaluate it on a four tuple of point. Well, what you really want, would like to do is to evaluate it. I mean, if this was a real map, you would just uh, evaluate on the image of phi of these points, but it's not a real map, so you need to integrate over the, the image. So you want to take B of F0, F3, and you integrate with respect, with respect to these measures of F0, OK, and if, if the image is in, is in uh, Dirac measures, then this is re really just the, the, uh, the evaluation on the pullback. Uh, and F0 up to F3. Um, and then I should describe also what the transfer does. And then we will put the two together. So the, maybe I write it here, if I have the transfer of a co-cycle, let's call it, uh, let's call it B or F, no, I don't know, C on points X0 up to X3, 
this is just the integral of C on translate of your points. where you, you integrate over a fundamental domain for the quotient of your lattice in your group. And you normalize the Haar measure here to, so that this has volume one. So now if we put these two together, this means that this co-cycle will be sent to some complicated co-cycle given by integrating here and integrating here. And then we will know that in cohomology, it's equal to this, to this class here, which means that they will differ by a co-boundary. And from that, we can start working. So this means the decomposition, so it's the, the transfer of rho it will, rho star of b is represented by a co-cycle. So it's a co-cycle on the boundary of hyperbolic three space. Um, you want to integrate over this and then F0, F3. What is it? I have to put the g at the right place, so it's b of, uh, wait, uh, yeah, f0, f3, and the measures here, gx0. OK, this doesn't look so nice yet. Um, but it will get nicer and nicer when we get rid of all the um, in particular of this, uh, of this prob probability measures. Um, so what do we know? We know that this is equal in cohomology to this constant times the, the volume. OK, but now this, for this one, we have a very explicit representative. Which is the volume of the, of the uh, simplex with these vertices. But this inequality in cohomology, so a priori, it could differ by a co-boundary. But now we saw this argument already. Uh, the co-boundary will be an al alternating sum of uh, this four, four tuple where you remove one point. So it's a three tuple. So on each three and on three on, on triples, you act transitively. So any co-chain would have to be locally constant. And when you take the, the, the co-boundary, you have four terms. It always vanishes Okay, by three, ton by three transitivity of SL uh, of isometries of H space. If you want the main theorem one, where here you land uh, in HN, acting on a uh, uh, boundary of hyperbolic N space, you don't, you don't have the, the three transitivity anymore. But you can argue differently by, um, by passing to um, to uh, coefficients with, a, with an action of the isometry group just enough to have the vanishing of, uh, of co-boundaries. So th th this, is, this is not a real issue. So we have this equality. Uh, well, except that it's not really an equality because uh, we all of this work up to measure 0. So this is only an almost everywhere equality. And since what we want to study is the image of regular simplices, we want to plug in here the, the values of regular simplex. And this has measure 0 in the space of, of uh, simplices in, in dimension greater equal to 3. So in that almost everywhere, equality will not tell us anything. So what we want to do now is to show how this almost everywhere equality 
implies everywhere equality. And um, this, in I have to say that for for H n, except in the case where you know that you have a continuous boundary map, in which case you have two uh, two continu I mean continuous except except where they cannot be continuous. I mean like like the the, the volume co-cycle, which agree almost everywhere. Then they agree everywhere. But for each n in general, for n greater or equal to 4, this is a little bit painful. It uses uh, Lusin theorem. However, for n equal 3, there's a, there's a cute trick. Um, for n equal 3, the, there is a following trick. If you have two co-cycle, so you have a and b, Again, it's always using the transitivity. It's doing the same thing all, uh, over and over again. Um, if you have two co-cycles, so there are, there are co-cycles everywhere, co-cycles everywhere, which is the case here, because both B and the volume are co-cycled everywhere, they are defined everywhere, um, but they are only almost everywhere equal, then this implies that, in fact, you have equality everywhere. And why is that? So, so proof of this, this small fact. Um, so you know that since A equals B everywhere, so for, for almost every psi 0, psi 1, psi 2, I have A of psi 0, psi 1, psi 2, and I have Force variable, which I leave. Okay, I and mean, this is stupid for almost every psi. Now, for almost every, I just pick such a triple, such a triple, xi zero, xi one, xi two, for which I have this equality almost everywhere. But now, uh, since you act, uh, since SL2C acts transitively on triples of distinct point, uh, this means that I have this very same equality here for almost every psi, in fact, for every. Psi zero, psi one, psi two. Uh, it's just playing, uh, playing around with the transitivity. And now, I still have this for almost every in the last uh, in the last variable. And I will I will use no, I've used the cocycle relation. I fix four points, and you have the cocycle relation. Uh, which tells you that for any other psi, I have, you can write it as, so I leave one of the, of the variable here, okay, this is for, for any psi. And now for each of these triple, I have, uh, I have equality f for b with b for almost every psi. So it's an intersection of, of uh, four dense subsets. So in particular, there is one psi for which 
this will work. So this is now for almost every xi. You have this. And you go back to have the equality. This goes cycle in inequality, so delta B is equal to zero. Um, OK, so now we have equality there everywhere. And from that, we can de deduce that, in fact, this everywhere, everywhere equality implies that your boundary map, the image of phi, lies in Dirac measures. So why is that? If I pick a regular simplex here, um, then I need this integral to be equal to the maximal possible value. Right? So now if I, I, I fix, uh, um, fix, OK. So pick, uh, it's not going to work. I need more space. So you pick a maximal for tuple. And you look at, uh, at this, this integral. Since the, you need to have equality, this means that b of f0 up to f3 has to be has to be maximal for uh, phi g x i 0 almost every f0, and this for any i. Now, if you pick, pick f0, f1, f2, such that b f0, f1, f2, and f3 is maximal. Now you just have for phi g of psi 3 almost every f3. Now we use the one of the first rigidity property is that if you fix three of the flags, you have a unique choice, unique choice for maximality. In fact, you can choose even less, just two flags plus uh, one dimensional space here. And then you have a unique way to complete, uh, to have a maximal photopel. So this means that this has to be a direct measure. So you essentially get a map. So phi is a map. Uh, from the boundary to uh, the flag space in the maximal case. OK, and now what, uh, what do we have more? We have that this map phi, phi maps almost every regular simplex to a maximal, to a maximal four tuple. And why is that? Because now if I if I, I can rewrite if I get rid of the of the of the measures instead direct, because I, I I rewrite the equality as so you have one over six m m square minus one m the volume of xi zero up to xi three. This is now the integral over fundamental domain gamma of b of phi of gxi0 
up to j uh, phi of j g xi3. OK, I still integrate over g. Because if you start with a regular simplex, this is maximal. And here, you integrate over this fundamental domain. Uh, if the only way it can be maximal is if it's for almost every g, this, because g xi0 up to g xi3 stays a regular simplex. So uh, for almost every g, this regular simplex is sent to a regular uh, maximal <coughs> tuple by phi. And now you conclude, uh, as in, we saw the case when phi is continuous, or when, non, yeah, phi, phi was supposed to be continuous, and it maps every regular simplex to a regular simplex. Well, it's exactly, uh, it's exactly uh, this is the essence of the proof here also, because if you have a maximal four tuple, if you fix three of its points, you have a unique choice of maximal, uh, maximal four tuple with the opposite sign, where you change just one of the, of the vertex. So I think I'll stop here. Thank you. Near the, m near the maximum, well, well, it's, I would like to say that you know as little or as much as you know in the, in the uh, three-dimensional hyperbolic case, but it's not, uh, which is not quite true. In fact, um, in fact, you can determine the, dim the dimension, the di deformation uh, dimension around these these spaces, and it goes higher with the um, with the dimension. In fact, I, mean, I should mention there's um, there's a whole group of uh, people around uh, Elisha Falbel, Antonin Guillou, that works the other way around. Like they 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 start from the correspond. I mean, they start from uh, something that should be equivalent map. So in fact, they don't define it on the whole of the boundary, but just on ideal, ideal points. They, at they, they attach to each ideal point a flag with some compa compatibility condition, which co correspond to the co-cycle relation. And from that, they build a representation co for which the, the, the co-cycle would be the, the pullback of the, this co-cycle. And then they, they have algorithm actually to, to compute it. So I mean, for, for small tri ideal triangulation, like for the complement of the figure eight knot, you can actually, uh, you can actually study the uh, space of representation. Uh, yes, I, yeah, yeah, you can, uh, 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 they use that to show that you actually get a local maximum at uh, irreducible representation, I mean, at the, but uh, you, you just get a local, local maximum. Any other questions?